Please, do not try this at home. Wade Boggs loves beer. Hold on. What I'm worried you might have just heard was, Wade Boggs likes to kick back and enjoy a nice cold one every once in a while. But that would be wrong, because what I said was, Wade Boggs loves beer. I cannot emphasize this point enough. See, some people may remember the Hall of Famer for his legendary playing career, one which saw him make 12 All-Star appearances, win 5 batting titles, including 4 straight from 85 to 88, and earn a World Series ring with the Yankees in 96. He's one of 33 players to have reached 3,000 hits, he had a 328 lifetime batting average, and he reached base safely in 85% of his 2,432 career games. Others may know Boggs as the Chicken Man, a deeply superstitious individual and a terror to poultry everywhere. He was known to have eaten chicken before every game, and even authored a chicken cookbook in 1983. Among his other rituals were wearing the same socks each game, fielding exactly 150 ground balls in practice, and drawing the Hebrew word hai, meaning life, in the batter's box before each at-bat, even though he isn't Jewish. He once requested that Fenway Park PA announcer Sherm Feller not call out his uniform number when he introduced him, explaining that he'd broken out of a slump on a day when Feller forgot to announce the number. But aside from the hitting and the chicken, it was Boggs' love of beer that got him the most attention from the press, to the point where even non-baseball media wanted a piece of Wade. In fact, his drinking has become such an iconic aspect of the Wade Boggs persona that it's earned him a guest spot on more than his fair share of TV shows. I thought you folks were uh, Red Sox fans. Oh, yeah, well, we're Red Sox fans. <laughs> sure, Mr. Wade Boggs. <laughs> and you janitor Wade Boggs. How you doing? Ah, Wade Boggs goes down smooth. Wow, 1980s all-star Wade Boggs. Lord Palmerston! It the Elder! Okay, you asked for it, Boggs! Ah! It's Wade Boggs' drinking record, okay? The man's a legend! It's this one in particular that's going to be our focus for today. This is the season 10 premiere of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Sunny, as I'm going to be referring to it from this point on, is the longest-running live-action sitcom in American television history. It's also featured its fair share of baseball tie-ins. You've never heard of Mike All right, Schmidt. easy dude. Dickin, dude. Yeah, but maybe he's never he's heard He's the all-time leading home run hitter, No, he's dude. not the all-time leading home well, run hitter. for white guys, he's he is. He's not even for white guys. Dude, are you taking me seriously? <laughs> like if it's me, I'm going Chase Utley 100% of the time. He's a power hitting second baseman. Do you know how rare that is in yeah. the National League? Well, yeah, and he's hot, which is like number one on my is. list. But I really like Ryan Howard. Did you write a love letter to Chase Utley? Is that... Dear Chase, I feel like I can call you Chase because you and me are so much alike. I would love to meet you someday. It would be great to have a catch. I know I can't throw as fast as you, but I think you would be impressed with my speed. I am sure our relationship would be a real home run. Why are you filling up with chicken? Do you know anything about Wade Boggs? A man ate a chicken before every game, all right? That's why they called him a chicken man. I'm about 328 lifetime. I'm sure he ate some Roman Cokes too, all right? In this episode, the gang beats Boggs. Our main characters take part in the Wade Boggs Challenge. A, you know what, I'll let them explain. Legend. He drank 50 beers on a cross-country flight and then absolutely destroyed the Seattle Mariners the next day, okay? Yeah. The number of beers is actually highly disputed. Some say 50, some teammates yeah. said 60, some said as many as 70 beers. Hold on. 70? 70 beers. That can't be right. How much beer? What's the most many beers you've ever drank in one day? In one day? Yeah. Over 100. Seriously? Yeah, over 100. Well, he told me that the real, the actual number, he's like, he pulled me aside, he's like, Charlie, really? It was 107. Hmm. This sounds bogus. In fact, it most likely is bogus. Why even spend the time discussing it at all, honestly? But could it be done? Well, I spent way too much time actually doing the math, so please indulge me. Let's use the show's apparently conservative estimate of 70 beers over the course of a flight from Boston to LAX, a roughly seven hour trip once we account for boarding and taxiing on the runway and whatnot. Because they'd have been flying into LAX, that would mean we'd need to look for any instance in which the Sox played a game versus the California Angels after a home series in Boston. Keep in mind that an American League team wouldn't face off against the Dodgers in the regular season until interleague play was established in 1997. So here's what we're going with. This feat occurred during a flight from Boston to LA, the day before a game against the Angels. 
I tracked down every time the Red Sox played a game against the Angels after a home series from 1982 to 1992, the length of time that Boggs was in Boston. There are eight such instances. Then I looked at Boggs' stat line for each respective game. Sonny claims he went 3 for 5, but none of the games I found featured such a performance. But there were a few box scores that were almost right. The closest of these seems to be August 23, 1991. He went 2 for 4 with two singles, a ground out, and a fly out. At this point in his career, he would have been 33 years old. This is important because age is one of a number of factors that influence how much alcohol a person can withstand. Other important things to consider are height and weight. Baseball Reference has Boggs listed at 6 foot 2, 190 pounds, as well as body fat percentage, sex, water composition, enzyme production, and any medications one might be taking. What's also important to keep in mind is that while tolerance to alcohol varies from one person to another, it is not the same thing as blood alcohol content. In other words, while drinking a lot can allow you to feel less affected by alcohol, it doesn't affect your body's ability to process it. So even someone like Wade Boggs does in fact have a limit. The question now is what that limit is. So let's break it down. The most popular version of this story has Boggs drinking Miller Lite during his infamous cross-country excursion. The average alcohol by volume, or ABV, for a 12-ounce can of Miller Lite comes in at 4.2%, or roughly half an ounce of alcohol. 70 times that amount is about 35 ounces. That's over 2 pounds of alcohol, meaning that if Boggs really did drink that much beer, he would have been 1% pure alcohol by the end of the trip. Another thing to consider is caloric intake. A Miller Lite is good for 96 calories, so 70 of them would mean Boggs consumed nearly 7,000 calories worth of beer. That's like three times the daily recommended amount over the span of one flight from beer alone. For the average 200 pound man, each drink will raise his blood alcohol content by about 0.02%. After one beer, the typical person won't feel more than a slight buzz. For Wade, I'd expect it to be like having a glass of water. At five drinks, or a BAC of around 0.1, we're now above the legal limit to drive. At this point, we're talking impaired motor control, loss of good judgment, slurred speech, balance, and reaction time. By 10 drinks, things start to get a bit more serious. At a BAC of 0.2%, we start to enter an area where our most pressing concern becomes staying upright. This is oftentimes where you'll see someone of Wade Boggs' build require assistance in walking, experience nausea, vomiting, and possibly blacking out. But again, since Wade Boggs probably put this amount away on a regular basis, I wouldn't have trouble believing he could handle 10 in one go. We also have to account for the passage of time. See, contrary to popular belief, the only thing that helps decrease the amount of alcohol in your system is time. Not food, not a cold shower, not even the quote-unquote miracle hangover cure your buddy Eric will swear by. For every hour since the first drink, we can subtract 0.015% from the total blood alcohol content. Multiply that by 7 hours, and that leaves us with 0.105% to subtract from Wade's total BAC. Not that it would do him too much good. See, as the drink counter reaches the teens, we move beyond sloppy drunk and into really dangerous territory. With a blood alcohol content of 0.25% or more, one starts to run the risk of alcohol poisoning. This means medical attention and time to recover, in addition to kissing any chance of playing a pro baseball game the next day goodbye. But for the sake of argument, let's say Wade Boggs did make it past this point. We can even go so far as to disregard the part of the story that has him getting three hits afterwards. How many beers could Wade Boggs have feasibly consumed in the span of seven hours and still survived? Not played the next day, not walked off the plane, but merely live to see another day. If each drink were to have raised his blood alcohol content by 0.02%, and we subtracted 0.015% from that total for every one of the seven hours spent in the air, Wade could have conceivably drank 25 beers before reaching a BAC of 0.4%. Now, why are we stopping at 0.4%? Well, according to experts, that's the limit at which the drinker's body starts to completely shut down. They enter a comatose state with a strong possibility of death due to respiratory arrest. In other words, bad news. If Wade Boggs were to have actually drank 70 beers over the course of seven hours, his blood alcohol content would have been about 1.24%, over three times the survivable threshold. If we go with the other version of the story, the one that had him drinking 107 beers, 
That number rises to over 2%, enough to kill him five times over. Even if we stretch the time frame out so that he drank 70 over the course of a full day, that still only gets us to a BAC of 0.97%. In fact, if someone really did drink as much as Boggs claimed, they'd have to have done it over a 62-hour span, or nearly three days, to even possibly bring the amount of alcohol in their blood down to a less than lethal dose. So while Wade Boggs's prestigious drinking habit almost certainly meant that he could throw them back with the best of them, if he really had attempted the challenge that bears his namesake, odds are he wouldn't be here today. So what was the point of this video, you may be asking? Most of you probably could have guessed that there was no way any human being could have done what Boggs claimed to have pulled off. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not sure if I have a solid answer for you. But if I had to give a reason why, I think it's for the same reason Wade told the story in the first place. Why not? Rest in peace, Wade. And cheers. Wade Boggs would roll in his grave if he could see your behavior. Wade Boggs is alive. Huh? He lives in Tampa, Florida. He's in his early 50s. And you, where did you come from? You were just passed out.